Hello, everyone. I'm Kevin Kunzman, Managing Editor of HCP Live, uh, here for a virtual conference uh, video interview as part of our coverage for ASRS 2020 this year. I'm joined today by Dr. W. Lloyd Clark uh, from the Palmetto Retinal Center, uh, here to talk about some new data from the Panorama study on intravitreal uh, flibercept injection for diabetic retinopathy. And before we get into the findings and a little bit more discussion about the virtual meeting itself, uh, Dr. Clark, how are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me, Kevin. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, thank you so much. You mentioned that you're on vacation. I'm so sorry to pull you away from that right now. I'm sure you're somewhere nicer than what would have been Chicago at this time of year if uh, we were doing this in person. Well, you know, Chicago is a wonderful city, um, but it is nice. You know, it's been sort of a mixed, a mixed bag this year in terms of missing so many of the meetings. Um, you know, don't, we don't get to see many of our colleagues, but there's been some interesting uh, adaptations for virtual meetings. And, and certainly this is a, a, a ambitious one here with the American Society of Retina Specialists for sure. I'd say so, yeah. It, they, they certainly seem to have everything together. A very nice, clean presentation. Uh, everyone's very available for discussion and a lot of information right up front. So uh, excited to dig into it this weekend. But let's dig into this study for right now, if you don't mind. So uh, the Panorama study, obviously, uh, we've, we've been on this for uh, the past few years now in, in terms of development. Can you catch us up to speed about, I guess, exactly where we are headed into uh, you know, this assessment? Right, so the Panorama study is, is really sort of winding up now. We're presenting 100-week data at the SRS meeting this year, which is two-year follow-up on all three cohorts. But of course, uh, data from the primary outcomes at week 24 and week 52 have been uh, presented elsewhere uh, numerous times. And so in many ways, this is not a new study to the uh, audience, but does really uh, continue to offer insight in terms of management of patients with diabetic retinopathy with anti-VEGF agents. You know, it's, a, it's, a, it's really a paradigm shift in terms of uh, treatment of diabetic retinopathy. We've been accustomed to treating patients uh, with sort of the end stage uh, end results of more severe disease. And so the concept here with um, Panorama is to evaluate the idea of, of altering the, 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 um, the course of disease, sort of turning back the clock for lack of a better term in patients with sort of threshold retinopathy prior to our current uh, thresholds for treatment. So we've now got two-year data on patients that presented with moderately severe to severe diabetic retinopathy, level 47 to level 53 disease. About 400 patients in the initial cohort, we retained uh, over 80% of those eyes out two years. Uh, as a reminder, they were randomized into one of three treatment groups. The, the standard of care at the outset of Panorama was uh, observation, so there's a sham arm in Panorama. And then two active treatment groups uh, groups treated essentially on label for diabetic macular edema. So they got five monthly treatments and then went out to every eight week therapy uh, for the course of the uh, first year. And then importantly, as we get dig into the trial a little more, that group went from every eight week therapy to as needed treatment in year two based on investigator discretion. The third group uh, got three monthly injections, then an injection at eight weeks after that, and then went out to every 16 weeks. So a significantly reduced treatment burden compared to uh, uh, DME therapy. And that group actually received fixed dosing out for a total of 100 weeks. So that's a very interesting group that we'll sort of key on during the presentation of ASRS. That's really fascinating. And um, certainly it seems uh, the trend uh, when we're talking about the anti-VEGF class in, in, in terms of understanding it optimally um, is exactly what you want to get to as you're discussing here, uh, you know, treat as needed or uh, just as further apart as, as possible. Obviously, there's concerns about patient adherence or, um, you know, a lot of anxieties behind the treatment itself. And of course, just showing longer efficacy into year two and beyond. That's, that's really great. Right. Yeah. So, you know, really what we're keying on at the meeting today, not just with a flipper set, but with a variety of different treatment platforms is extended dosing, right? I mean, that really is sort of the future here. I think we we feel good about our outcomes if, if, we, uh, if we identify patients at the appropriate time and deliver appropriate therapy. Our outcomes in all of these retinal diseases with anti-VEGF therapy are really outstanding. The key, I think, the next sort of uh, sort of incremental step for us is, as, as, as is described here in the 16-week group, is to try to reduce treatment burden and maintain good outcomes. 